Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about maintaining accuracy while modeling in SketchUp. So, we hear this kind of thing a lot that, uh, oh, you know, SketchUp's great for conceptual modeling or just massing, but not really for details or exact dimensions. Uh, the thing is, SketchUp is as accurate as you need it to be. So, depending on the steps you take, you can have insane accuracy, like fractions of fractions of inches, very, very minute 0 0.0001 inch, I don't know, very small dimensions, but you do have to be intentional about it. It's not going to automatically assume what you want and make things the right dimensions or the right accuracy. You have to tell it how to do that. And good news, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Let's hop in. All right, so I have this, this model. This is a, a, a 3D printed part that I created. And uh, you can see by Teddy's feet right here, this is not a big piece, right? This is, uh, it's a couple inches wide. It's, it's not huge. Um, I pick this because it does have a bunch of small little details on it. And uh, obviously this, this is the kind of thing that I might run into if I'm, I'm concerned about detail. I want, I want these small details to be correct. I want these accurate, uh, that sort of thing. And they were there. This was, this printed perfectly, absolutely perfectly. Um, so I'm gonna look at some, some issues that people run into. So I have started just my standard, when I model in SketchUp, 90% of the time I'm modeling, modeling something architectural. So the template I use for that, the default is set for architectural units. So to check what you're modeling, you're gonna to go to, to window and go to model info. That's gonna pull up model info right here. And the last tab right here is units. We're gonna talk about everything, pretty much everything here on units. So like I said, this is my default is architectural. And I have my architectural set to a 16th inch uh, precision. And then my area and volume are square inches. And then I have that set to quarter inch square. So this is how I do most of my modeling. Um, again, 16th inch accuracy is just something I'm used to. This is where, where I came up doing design work was with accuracy of about a 16th of an inch. You can always make that finer, go up to a 64th of an inch, or if that's too much, you just go to a full solid inch, not nothing more, more, uh, finite or, or detailed than that. But this is where I do my, most of my work. This works great for architectural modeling. If I'm going in modeling, you know, framing something or modeling a building or something along those lines, this is the perfect setup. If I get into something like this, like what I have on my screen where I'm modeling these teeny tiny details, I mean, if we come look at, let's look at some of this. So this span across this opening is 5 sixteenths. This screw hole right here is an eighth of an inch. So I'm looking at some pretty small details. Uh, that's less than an eighth of an inch there. So this would not be the template to use for this model. I would definitely want to change it. So one of the things that people run into, I'm going to say immediately and, and complain about their lack of accuracy is they have something like this set when they should be using much smaller dimensions. So one of the things I would recommend is if you are doing something that requires a high level of detail, is use something more like decimal. Switch from architectural to decimal. You can still use inches, but in this case, it's not gonna round to the nearest sixteenth of an inch. It's gonna actually give you whatever that number is you want. So you can go one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places past zero. Or you can always, what I tend to do, is when I go into to modeling is I'll actually flip this over to millimeters and actually do most of my work in millimeters instead of putting in, uh, you know, fraction or very, very small inches. So that's my number one thing that I'd recommend. Make sure you, you have your measurement units set up to the precision you need for the thing you're doing. And this goes both ways too. So if I am modeling a house, don't model a house to, you know, 0. 0.000001 inch. Um, not because that's not a real thing, but because I, I'm just going to advocate for people who frame houses. Most tape measures don't have those numbers on it. 
So um, if you are doing something like that, you of course will want to flip back to something like architectural and have a realistic dimension here. Um, one of the other things that people run into with problems, and, and I know this is on by default, is enable length snapping. Let me give you an example of how this hurts people. So say I want to draw a line to this point, right? And I want to come over here. I'm going to pick a point, arbitrarily pick right here, and I want to draw that back to here. Now, the issue with enable length snapping is along this line, if you watch my, see my length down in the lower right corner, watch as I move my mouse, see how it's jumping at 1 16th at a time? If I get in here close to this point, that point's not the only point possible. There's also less than a 16th inch away, there's another snap point. So if you're not insanely co conscious and watching very, very closely to make sure you're hitting those points, it's super easy for length snapping to grab that other point. So some people go, oh, well, I'll make that simple. No problem. I'm just going to come in here and make that a really small unit. Whoops. Now, now, no problem. Nope, that's actually a bigger problem because now your other snap points are really close to that point and it's even harder to find whether or not you're hitting that right. So my recommendation is generally just to turn enable length snapping off. I know some people want to use that like a grid, like it's always going to be like everything should be on this perfect grid. But the fact is, unless you are even more vigilant about every start point and end point being on an end point, Length snapping is not going to help you out with that. So there are certain very, very general situations where I'm building with, you know, exact bricks, exact dimensions. Everything is one foot by one foot by one foot or something along those lines where that might be helpful. But generally speaking, this is going to give you additional snap points, which are not where you want them. So here's what I'm talking about with length snapping off. See this? I don't have, I'm not snapping. I'm just moving, moving along smoothly. And then as soon as I get here, Jump, I'm on the point or I'm off. And there's no there's no no uh, additional snap point that I accidentally hit to. So that is definitely a thing you want to consider if you're working on maintaining accuracy and exact dimensions. Disable snap, length snapping. Turn that off. Um, same thing goes for angle units right here. Uh, if you are doing a bunch of stuff where you're rotating things or, or drawing arcs, something like that, um, length angle snapping is kind of nice, actually. I use it because if, if I'm rotating, everything's probably going to be at 45, 30 degrees or 60 degrees. I don't want to do a whole lot of weird angles outside of that. So uh, for me, this is kind of nice. But if you're doing a bunch of stuff where you're going to, you know, I, I need to snap to 15.9 degrees and not 15, you might want to consider turning angle snapping off there. All right, the final thing I want to throw out there for maintaining accuracy. So if you do those things, if you if you t turn off length snapping, you set to a dimension that, or, or a unit type that makes sense for the size of model you're doing, that's going to help a lot. But every once in a while, stuff still can get off. You can sometimes, depending on how, if I go to snap to a point, depending on the view that I'm looking at. So if I'm looking right here, it's going to be really easy to snap to that point. If I'm like right here, then all of a sudden I've got all these other points that are showing up under here. Uh, turning X-ray on says gives me a whole bunch of extra spots I can snap to. So it's it's still possible to snap to points that aren't where you want and getting something off axis or in incorrect, that sort of thing. So one of the things I recommend if you're trying to maintain high level of accuracy is over here in styles. If I look at styles, go to the edit tab. And there in my, my edges right here, if I roll scroll down here all the way to the bottom, the color is set to all the same. If I switch that to by axis, this is a really cool thing. And it highlights all of the edges that are parallel to the main axes. So if I'm modeling something that doesn't have a bunch of curves or, or weird lines going off, which, you know, frankly, a lot of my models do conform to the red, green, or blue axes for their geometry. This is great because it will show you anything that's off axis. So my curves obviously fall off axis. That makes sense. Um, you can see I have a couple. Look at this right here. This whole wall right here is not on axis. On axis? On axis. I forget which one's the plural. So if I pull my line across, here's where the green axis is. So this should actually be back here. So I can grab this, come in here, grab this edge, 
move it back to here. There you go. See how those lines turned green? That means they're back on axis now. So that is a great help. So anytime you're working with geometry and you want to maintain and make sure everything is straight and flush, I would recommend checking out color by axis. So those are three tips. Work in the right units, work in the right uh, precision of units, take off length snapping. I know it sounds like it's going to help you, but you have to be twice as vigilant with length snapping on to make sure you don't hurt yourself and then check out color by axis. So just a quick video to, to mention a couple of those things and hopefully give examples, realistic examples, so you can see how or why you might want to use that. Um, it's of course, there depend, everybody uses SketchUp differently. There's so many different things you could model with SketchUp, so many ways you can model it that there's different solutions for different things that people model. So uh, I'm not gonna say that this is, everybody conforms to this one, needs a model the way that I do, but those tips are gonna help if you've ever had issues where you create a models and then you end up off on a dimension or, or something's not quite right, that should help you out. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. We wanna hear if there's other tips like this that you use to maintain accuracy or if you have a general tip for SketchUp you think we should show in a video. Or if you run into problems and you would like us to make a video to help you out of it, We'd like to hear that too. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more. Let's join something you want to see. Thank you.